Today in this video, I am returning to a unique photo editing application that I produced a sponsored video about a few months ago, that application being Luminar Neo. I don't use it on every image, nor is it my primary editor. I think my primary editors will probably always be Lightroom and Photoshop, but Luminar has found its way between the two. I'm going to share with you a smaller subset of tools than my first video, just a few select ones that I find to be really interesting from a technical and creative perspective and useful, of course, as well. Starting with the matte tool. If we just crank this up and down and take a look at the histogram up in the top right hand corner, like, you know, not even pay attention to the image, just look at the histogram and see what it's doing. It is compressing the tones. It is pushing the the uh, the highlights further up towards white it is increasing the contrast and the black point is also being pulled in so it's like doing a bunch of different things at once and you can think of this amount slider as being like an opacity slider it is a slider that controls all the different functions that are here in this matte uh, tool then the next tool down we have is fade it lifts as this name implies, it lifts the black point and the shadows even further. As you can see, it is uh, lifting those blacks and those shadows, making them a little bit softer and just generally creating a nicer, just softer roll off. Let's just park it right around here and do a before and after. And yeah, I mean, as you can see, the image is now in this state looking a little less digital, which I think is, uh, is a good thing. Now, one of the things you can do after adding a little bit of fade and using this matte tool, as I said, it pulls out some of that saturation and vibrance. Well, you can come down here to the vividness slider, which is essentially like the uh, vibrant slider in Lightroom and pull this up if you want to, you know, thicken up the colors just a little bit uh, more. If you feel like it needs, uh, if you feel like it pulled out a little too much. Okay, then at the bottom of the matte tool is an additional tool that you can use that is uh, closed by default. You might miss it, but when you toggle it open, there's something rather interesting in there. And that is this color toning tool. Now, what this tool does is push color, uh, almost like a, like a split toning tool. It pushes color into the fade. As you can see with, you know, hues set to red here, when I push this up and down, it is toning that fade. But another thing you can do you know, similar to split toning in general, if I felt like there was too much magenta in these rocks anyway, like if I felt like there was a color cast or something, well, I could add the opposite color of magenta, which is green. And green actually is a common thing that you see like in uh, analog film. Analog film uh, shadows oftentimes lean a little bit towards green. So you could use this tool to infuse those darker areas with green. Now with a high contrast image like this, uh, if we pull the contrast slider down into the negative, I feel like it just bakes in that matte look just a little bit better. Uh, it gives it more of that matte finish that I'm looking for. So now if we toggle on and off between, this is the before, this was the imported image into Luminar Neo, and then this is the after. And see what I mean? Like everything just has just a nicer, just lighter, softer touch to it. The contrast is not quite as harsh. The blacks and the shadows aren't quite as chunky. It just doesn't look quite as digital as it, as it did originally when I imported uh, the image. Okay, so the next tool we're gonna to take a look at here in Luminar Neo is the Color Harmony tool. Now this is a tool that, quite frankly, I didn't fully appreciate when I made my video a few months ago. I thought it was you know, interesting, but I didn't really delve into it. But since then, I've been using it more because it's kind of like, it basically has like four different tools in one section. It's kind of like a little bit of the HSL slider from Lightroom, a little bit of the, the color grading tool where you're able to split tone an image and target specific uh, tonal regions and add some color. All of them, you know, are designed to improve the the, the color balance, to improve the color harmony, um, the contrast of colors in your image. We're going to jump in here and take a look at it. And the image that we're going to be editing is one that you may recognize from my recent video of, uh, I think I called it good photos, bad photos <laughs> from a, a recent landscape photography trip of mine out West. This is like um, kind of like an unfinished version that you're looking at here. That's why it appears different and somewhat somewhat sad, somewhat unfinished uh, compared to the final one. Okay, so color harmony down here at the bottom. Now the first tool here that you will see is this brilliance and warmth 
tool. Now, I have to admit, I am not a fan of this brilliance tool. It kind of does this thing where it increases brightness, but also the, the saturation of colors. It's almost like if you had like an analog film image and you wanted it to look digital, this is the tool you would use because it, oh, it, yeah. And the warmth uh, slider that you see here is, kind of like a, it's more or less like a color temperature tool, like a white balance tool. I don't find it to be particularly compelling. So I almost always skip over these first two. But the next tool down I think is interesting. And it's one that I've really grown to appreciate and I've been finding myself using more and more. And that is the color contrast tool. Now this tool is really interesting to me because what it effectively emulates is the behavior of color filters on a camera lens, which is something that black and white photographers oftentimes use. Let's say you're shooting in Arizona, something like that, and you want to make your, your reds and your oranges and your yellows like the rocks. You want to make those things brighter, but you also want to diminish the sky. You want the sky to be darker. Well, you would put an orange filter on the camera, and that is effectively what this color contrast tool does. So for an image like this, if I just turn up the amount slider here and then push hue over towards orange, and let's just you know, raise and lower this like so, you can see it's almost like, like increasing the volume of sunlight, like the yellows and the oranges get a little bit brighter. And if I just push this a little bit harder so you can see the sky, see what's happening up there? See how the sky is getting darker? It's almost like it's getting polarized, like especially up here in the, in the top left. Now, of course, you don't need Luminar Neo for something like this. If I were editing this in Lightroom, I could do the same thing by, you know, lifting the luminance. Um, and maybe some of the saturation of the warm tones and then push uh, the blues further down. And, you know, I could do it manually that way, but this tool doesn't, you know, doesn't really require you to think about, uh, you know, the color wheel or to think about color harmonies or anything like that. You just choose a hue that you want to be brighter and stronger. And then the tool will automatically darker what it, darken whatever is opposite that. So pretty helpful and quick and easy little tool, I think. All right, then the next tool down in the color harmony panel is split color warmth. Another interesting and unique tool because what this tool does is target, uh, it, it essentially adds split toning to the image, but instead of targeting tones, instead of targeting shadows, midtones, and highlights like you would get like in the color grading tool in Lightroom, this one split tones the image by targeting the hues. So it's essentially a way of like grouping together all of your warmest hues. Uh, grouping together all of your coolest hues and then moving all of them at once, making you know the warm tones warmer, uh, making them lean a little more towards red or maybe a little more towards green. And with the cool, you are pushing those a little further towards cyan or a little further towards magenta. So for an image like this one here, if I take the warm slider and push this a little further away from green, you can see that it's getting a little bit redder right? All of these warm tones, like the full range of warm hues that are, you know, in this landscape here from the yellows to the oranges and everything, all of them are collectively and as a group moving a little bit further towards the warm end of the scale. So let's just toggle this on and off and uh, see what effect we had on the image. And yeah, right. I mean, I really didn't do much here. I really just, you know, I just added uh, a little bit of warmth, uh, a little extra warmth to my warm tones. And then I increase the color contrast of the oranges and the yellows. And that may be actually a little much. Let me just bring it back a little bit. Maybe bring that back some too and um, toggle that on and off. And so, yeah, that's a little more subtle. I think I like that better. And I think this is closer to what I did when I uh, edited this image originally. And I think it, I think it looks really nice. Okay, the last tool we're gonna take a look at here is one that honestly, I, I feel like I slept on a little bit um, in my first video about Luminar Neo. I think I viewed it mostly as a, like a special effect filter that you would sometimes use. And that tool is Atmosphere. All right, so let's take a look at this image here. Now, one of the things that I noticed when I look at this is that this was shot obviously uh, on a cloudy overcast day, no direct light. Like if you, if you really analyze this and it might be easier to to see if we convert it to black and white. The contrast and the detail of the far off background, you know, way back here in the back of this, this valley is very similar to what's here in the foreground, right? I mean, there's, there's not a whole lot of distinction between the two. Now, obviously that is something that some people like, like some people focus stack their images. Some people add clarity and dehaze to their backgrounds because they want 
um, you know, everything in the image to have the same contrast and tonality and, and sharpness and detail and all that kind of stuff. Personally, I don't like personally, I like images to have um, more depth in them. And when you think about the depth in a landscape, whatever is furthest away from you, whatever is, you know, across a valley like here, whatever is furthest away typically will be softer, will have lower contrast. There will be just more haze in the air, just more, you know, particles in the air. If we, you know, wanted to address this and wanted to, you know, pull the eye through the frame, we could, you know, employ a technique that painters have used. And, you know, most famously people like, you know, the Hudson River School, of course. You know, the fact that oftentimes these, you know, far off distant areas and those paintings that they created would have a, a certain glow or certain luminance to them, a certain brightness and a, and a low contrast, low clarity uh, look. And then the foreground would be uh, would be darker so that then the viewer feels like they're being pulled through the image and using the atmosphere tool, we can effectively emulate the same look. We can reduce clarity, reduce uh, detail, increase brightness of you know whatever is off in the distance in order to increase the the perceived depth of the image so here's the atmosphere tool and inside of this mode drop down we have fog layered fog mist and haze and honestly i think this is what threw me at first like when i first looked at this tool i think i mainly thought of it as a like a special effect kind of a tool I, I viewed it as a very literal thing, but I didn't really think too much about the creative application of this, of what we could do with it. Uh, I typically stick with fog, like fog works well for me. So let's um, let's begin there. And when I turn up a mount, notice what's happening to my background back there. See what's off in the distance here? See how it's getting brighter. It's becoming less saturated. It's becoming a little less clear. The clarity is being dropped. And now it appears to be further away, like we're increasing the perceived distance between the foreground and the background by brightening the, uh, the background, by reducing its clarity, which I think looks rather nice. Maybe a little too much, uh, but I'm, I'm overdoing it a little bit so you're able to see it on video. And then underneath the amount slider, we have a depth slider. Now, the depth is automatically, you know, set by AI. It automatically figures out where it thinks it needs to be. But if you don't like that and you want to pull the effect closer to the camera, let me just crank this up. You can pull it all the way up to the foreground if you want. It's almost like it's it's literally like rolling towards you like <laughs> like fog actually would uh, if you were out in the landscape. Like it's, it's pretty trippy. You can also uh, increase the perceived depth by darkening the, the foreground. And we can actually do that here in Luminar Neo by using the relight tool. And here's an option here for brightness near and brightness far. We don't need to do far because we already, you know, we already did that. But for this, we're just gonna do brightness near. So I'm just gonna pull this down a little bit. Now you don't have to do this in Luminar, of course, if you're more comfortable using the, like the linear gradient tools and and Lightroom and with good reason, because then you have like sky masking and all that. So sometimes, uh, you know, like this kind of like dodging and burning stuff of like the foreground could be better in uh, in a tool like Lightroom. But just with a couple of sliders, I was able to do something that would oftentimes require a fair amount of time. So let's just toggle everything off uh, and check it out. See how much brighter the foreground used to be and how much darker the background was. And now we have flipped the uh, the ratio. Now it's darker in the, in the foreground and brighter out here in the distance. I feel like I went a little too heavy on brightness near. So let me just do that again. That's before and that's after. Okay, so uh, if you want to give Luminar Neo a try with your own images, if you'd like to experiment with it, like I've been doing here and see how you like it, there is a free trial uh, for Luminar Neo, both Mac and Windows versions linked down below in the video description. So check it out. And if you decide to keep it and you wanna pay for it, uh, there is a coupon code down there as well that you can use. And I'm hoping that coupon code still works. It's the same code that I shared a few months ago when I first made a video, so I assume it's still active, but at the very least, you can download a trial and give it a shot and see what you think. I like it, obviously. Uh, for me, it works really well. Again, like I said earlier, as a like a final sweetening phase between Lightroom and Photoshop, just a little something extra uh, with you know very specific select tools just to prepare the image and give it a little extra polish before I go into Photoshop and do maybe a little additional dodging, burning, some cleanup work, you know, maybe some sharpening, stuff like that. So for me, that's how the app works best. Now, obviously you can use Neo 
by itself if you really want to. You don't have to have Lightroom or Photoshop in your workflow. You could do everything in, in Luminar Neo if you want. And I'm sure plenty of people use it that way, but this is how I use it. And I just like it as, you know, I just like it right there. I like it in that in that little area between Lightroom and Photoshop for me, it works really well. So that said, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please take a moment and give this video a thumbs up down below and uh, I will see you next time.